Kidney disease is a serious health concern affecting millions of people across the globe. While various treatment options are available, spirulina has been gaining popularity due to many of its amazing health benefits. But for a kidney patient, consuming spirulina for 30 days might leave a lot of questions in your mind. Will it help to improve your kidney function or worsen it? What are the potential risks and benefits? Here is what you need to know. Spirulina is a blue-green algae that thrives in warm and alkaline water bodies. It has been harvested and consumed for centuries by different populations in different parts of the world. Spirulina is rich in protein, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, all crucial for healthy living. In fact, it is considered by experts to be one of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. It is rich in protein with a bioavailability of up to 85%, making it an excellent source of plant-based protein for vegetarians and vegans. Additionally, spirulina is rich in several B vitamins, in addition to vitamin A, vitamin C, and vitamin E, and minerals like iron, calcium, magnesium, and zinc that offer several amazing health benefits such as Number 1. It can reduce inflammation in your body. Inflammation is a common problem for kidney patients, often leading to damage and scarring of kidney tissue. Studies have shown that spirulina can significantly reduce the levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines, which are markers of inflammation in the body. This is mainly due to the presence of many antioxidants in spirulina, especially phycocyanin. In fact, a 2018 lab study investigated phycocyanin's effect on induced inflammation in kidney cells. The results showed that phycocyanin reduced the production of interleukin-6 by 50% and tumor necrosis factor alpha by 44%. Both IL-6 and TNF-alpha are inflammatory markers, and their higher levels indicate a higher risk of kidney damage and other chronic diseases. By effectively reducing inflammation, Spirulina can reduce your risk of developing many inflammatory conditions in the first place. Number 2. It can help regulate your blood pressure. As you may already know, high blood pressure and kidney disease are closely related. Consistently high blood pressure can potentially damage the kidneys, and damaged kidneys can contribute to high blood pressure. In fact, it has been estimated that about 28% of new cases of kidney failure in the U.S. are linked to high blood pressure, and over 30% of people with chronic kidney disease have high blood pressure as the primary cause. Spirulina can effectively help lower blood pressure, reducing the risk of heart disease, kidney damage, and other complications. In fact, a 2020 study shows that consuming 8 grams of spirulina per day for 12 weeks reduced systolic blood pressure by up to 7.9 units and diastolic blood pressure by up to 5.2 units. Experts say that this could mainly be due to the anti-inflammatory properties of spirulina, helping to reduce inflammation in your arteries and improving overall cardiovascular health. Spirulina has also been shown to boost the production of nitric oxide, which is a vasodilator, meaning it helps to relax and widen your arteries. This can help keep your blood flow smooth, keeping your blood pressure in a healthy range, and reducing your risk of developing many complications associated with high blood pressure. Number 3. It can help regulate your blood sugar. Another major risk factor for kidney disease is high blood sugar. In fact, according to studies, high blood sugar accounts for over 30% of chronic kidney disease cases and over 28% of kidney failure cases in the U.S. alone. Over time, high blood sugar can weaken and narrow the delicate blood vessels within your kidneys, hindering blood flow and preventing them from filtering waste products effectively. This can lead to glomerular damage. Glomeruli are basically the tiny filtering units in your kidneys. High blood sugar can scar and damage these units, leading to proteins spilling into your urine, an early sign of kidney disease. High blood sugar can also cause kidney fibrosis, the excessive scar tissue formation in the kidney's inner structures, which can significantly hamper kidney function and may even cause kidney failure if not treated on time. Luckily, spirulina has shown great potential in blood sugar management. In fact, according to a 2017 study, people with type 2 diabetes who took 8 grams of spirulina per day for 12 weeks found a reduction in their blood sugar levels by 18.5%. Plus, their HbA1c levels reduced by 0.8%.
Some studies even show that spirulina may have the potential to considerably reduce blood sugar levels, sometimes even surpassing the efficacy of popular diabetic drugs, such as metformin. Studies show that spirulina can enhance insulin sensitivity, meaning it can improve how your cells respond to insulin, making them more efficient in utilizing the glucose in your blood. Plus, spirulina's anti-inflammatory properties can reduce inflammation due to high blood sugar levels, reducing the risk of kidney damage and other complications because of that. Number 4. It can boost your immune function. Kidney disease can weaken the immune system, making kidney patients more vulnerable to infections and diseases. Spirulina is rich in many immune-boosting nutrients such as vitamin C, vitamin E, and beta-carotene. It also contains polysaccharides, which have been shown to enhance the activity of immune cells in the body, natural killer cells to be more specific, which act as frontline defenders against infections and tumors. Having a healthy immune function can greatly minimize your risk of developing UTIs and other complications associated with kidney disease. Number 5. It can reduce your risk of developing anemia. Anemia is a common complication of kidney disease, where the body cannot produce enough red blood cells. And many people don't know that kidneys are the primary site of EPO production, a hormone crucial for stimulating red blood cell production. In kidney disease, EPO production declines, leading to decreased red blood cell production and anemia. Chronic kidney disease can affect nutrient absorption and metabolism, leading to deficiencies in iron, vitamin B12, and folate, all essential for healthy red blood cell production. Luckily, spirulina contains around 2.85 mg of iron per just 10 grams, making up for about 16% of daily needs for men and 35% for women. Plus, it's also a good source of vitamin B12 and folate, both essential for the production of red blood cells. Now let's see what is the safe dosage of spirulina for kidney patients. Many experts recommend taking 1 to 8 grams of spirulina per day for optimal results. For blood sugar management, a daily dose of around 2 grams has been found to be effective and safe for most individuals. For blood pressure regulating effects, daily dosages of around 3.5 to 4.5 grams have been recommended by many experts. But remember that before starting to take spirulina on a daily basis, consulting your doctor is essential. Spirulina contains a lot of protein, and having a diet low in protein is generally better for kidney function. This is particularly important if you have chronic kidney disease, high blood pressure or hypertension, and high blood sugar or diabetes. Discussing with your doctor will help you determine how much spirulina is safe for you according to your individual needs and health condition, and ensure that spirulina doesn't interfere with any medication you might be taking. As an interesting side effect, spirulina can also temporarily change the color of your urine and mouth. There's no need to worry. This is very typical and is usually harmless. Besides spirulina, there's another potential natural remedy that can be especially helpful for people who are diabetic or obese. MCT oil is basically made from a special type of fat called medium-chain triglycerides, often derived from coconut oil. Unlike other more frequent forms of dietary fat, medium-chain triglycerides can be easily converted into energy by the body. Unlike carbs, MCT acts like an energy source without triggering an insulin surge. This can be especially helpful in managing blood sugar levels. Some studies have also shown that including MCT in the diet can help improve insulin sensitivity, which is amazing. Plus, it has been shown to promote feelings of fullness, helping you lose weight, which too can help you manage diabetes and reduce your risk of many chronic diseases. Above all, MCTs bypass the usual digestive process and are directly absorbed into the bloodstream, providing a quick and readily available energy source. This could be beneficial for people with certain types of kidney disease who face challenges with energy production. To include MCT oil or supplements in your daily diet, begin with as little as 1 teaspoon or 5 grams per day and monitor your response. Discontinue usage if you experience any adverse reactions like digestive upset, diarrhea, bloating, or nausea. You can slowly increase the dosage every few days or as advised by your doctor, potentially reaching a maximum of 3 to 4 tablespoons or 45 to 60 grams per day in some cases. 
and always follow your doctor's specific recommendations regarding dosage and monitoring based on your individual circumstances. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to support our mission to help improve your health. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.